It's time for Branding Business, the only show that brings branding experts and corporate executives together to explore how branding your business can improve both your top-line growth and bottom-line performance. Brought to you by Rikus Baird. And now, here's your host. Welcome to Branding Business with Rikus Baird. I'm Ryan Rikus, and today's show topic is focused on rebranding and renaming an existing successful company. Today's guest is Jason Rose, Senior Vice President of Business Development for Novalon, the new name for MedAssurant, a leading provider of data-driven healthcare solutions. Novalon works with the industry's largest healthcare insurers, and its products and services touch more than 285,000 physicians, 195,000 clinical facilities, and 120 million Americans. Rika Spirit had the opportunity of working with Jason and Novalon's executive leadership team to research and help evolve the organization's unique brand positioning, which became the strategic foundation. Jason, welcome to Branding Business. Hi, Ryan. Thank you very much for uh, asking me to join you today. Our pleasure. Thanks for being a guest. Well, Jason, this decision to rename MedAssurant, which is in a very successful and established company, was not made overnight. And yet, what you've told me as the company grew and, and evolved, the question of the original name emerged. Is it appropriate to take us forward? Can you talk about the process your executive team went through in deciding to rename? Sure, Ryan, absolutely. And Novalon, and formerly MedAssurant, has had just many, many years of just great growth and expansion. Uh, we've been in existence since 1998. And during 2011, we launched a holistic examination of uh, of our brand and uh, decided that we needed to take an initiative to really have a better insight into our brand and how it was received inside the marketplace. So we're in the healthcare market space, mainly working with the managed care industry, also working with academic institutions in the pharma industry, as well as physicians and hospitals. And we really wanted to get a better understanding of how we were being received across this uh, growing healthcare and healthcare IT market space. And in doing so, avoid uh, the inherent naming confusion that could potentially occur with some specific parties in the insurance and the healthcare industry. And, and really, at the end of the day, better align our brand with our products, our mission, our vision, our increasingly diverse products. We, we decided upon doing so that it would make sense to consider rebranding the organization and, and potentially renaming the organization in doing so. One of the first things that we saw in, in the uh, understanding of how we were being received is how we could be confused with other organizations. There's, uh, in our industry, Medtronic, there's Medco, there's Assurance, Assurant, Medventive, et cetera. And oftentimes we'd be confused in the market space asking if we're a subsidiary or a parent organization or confusing what we do as a company. So from there we just decided that it would make sense to change our name. Perfect. That's a great backdrop for our, our dialogue and discussion today. So we realize that some companies prefer to, to do it in-house and use their internal resources for renaming. Any thoughts you can give our listeners on the concept of, of doing something like this in-house versus using a professional services firm like Rika Spirit? Sure. We're not naming experts. We, we haven't done this very often. We've really only done this, frankly, once before when we named our company MedAssurance previously. So we really need to bring someone from the outside that had the broad experience and understanding what goes into crafting the name, understanding what the process should be, engaging our employees. We, we ended up calling them brand ambassadors uh, by the end of the process, which um, we'll get more to later. And we really wanted to get someone that wasn't so uh, focused inside of our healthcare industry and had that, that larger experience and focus. So we absolutely have a, a phenomenal marketing team. So in my role, I'm responsible for all the business development and marketing for the organization. And we have about 3,500 to 4,000 people nationwide, but really don't have the, that type of experience in-house. We've got a great team that can execute on a strategy, but really developing what the name ought to be and how we got there was really not our forte. So for us, because we didn't have that type of resource in-house, it really made a lot of sense to have a group lead us on a process that had been tried and true and really help us understand methodically 
how we ought to go about not just choosing a name, but actually uh, methodically rolling out the name to the market and our clients and employees. So once you made this decision to rename and use an outside firm, how did you go about the process of selecting a firm? Well, we, uh, Ryan, we did a competitive bid situation. We researched the top branding firms in the market and identified about a dozen different branding organizations. Some of the branding organizations work with public relations firms as the same organization. Some of the organizations were independent branding firms, and we sent out an RFP to these uh, dozen or so organizations and asked for a response. Of the 12 organizations, we brought in three of them to uh, come on site in our uh, headquarters, which is outside of Washington, D.C., in Bowie, Maryland, to uh, give it a, a presentation, about a two-hour presentation, to the executive leadership team and uh, a couple members of my marketing organization to tell the story on how they could help us. So when we saw the oral presentations, in fact, frankly, speaking even before the oral presentations, just the response from the RFP, we already had our front runner in terms of who we thought would come out ahead, and we were we were correct in that assumption. Not only did it give us a competitive view of the different firms out there and different techniques and methods that we could see, and also the culture of these organizations, whether or not they would fit with our team, but also would help us really understand at what level they had done some research on the culture of our organization, looking at our uh, arsenal on our website, what was publicly available, to see if they had really done a good job of homework and understanding who we are and what we want to be. So it was a, it was a very good, methodical process um, identifying the right firm. Well, we were uh, blessed to be chosen and enjoyed the relationship. And, and as you know, we strongly believe that positioning and naming should be based upon a solid strategic platform. And to get to that platform, we typically go through a good amount of industry research as well as building the brand from within using the, uh, the insights from the executive team, which of course helps us build a clear, defendable, and relevant brand position. Because we're at one point going to ask you to make decisions about positioning as well as a name. We took you through in terms of looking at the strategic perceptions of MedAssurant, as well as the uh, strengths, the benefits that you offer, helpful in actually evaluating both the name candidates Absolutely. That really, frankly, Ryan, that came through all the way back from the response to the RFP as well as the oral presentation. And then uh, once we uh, implemented and, or started the engagement with our uh, on-site kickoff over here in the corporate office, but it was uh, really the thoughtfulness on taking a step back out of our busy work day. And this was in the January time frame of looking at what exactly our, our positioning was. And really, it's not just a name. It's really who we are, what our mission is, our vision, our purpose, what our positioning is in the industry. Do we want to have flexibility to be able to stand out from the rest of our industry? And then following that process was really critically important to, to have a, a group discussion. And frankly speaking, that was why it was so important to me and why we had such success was that we had the entire executive leadership team as a part of the process. Our largest advocate for our branding change and naming change was our chief executive officer. So from, from him and all his direct reports, which include me, it was really important that we had a very strong understanding of our strategic positioning. So it wasn't something that Rikas Bear was telling us what it needs to be. It was making sure that we were thinking through this thoughtfully to understand where we were and where we were headed over the next many years. Well, I appreciate the feedback, Jace. As we help companies develop and, and support their growth strategies, corporate naming, often it's one of the most challenging assignments, and especially for existing companies who are already successful. It's really akin to uh, renaming your baby all over again. A very emotional process, and we counsel our clients to really trust the process, and it works on both sides, rationally and emotionally, and often emotions come forward. But you got to trust the process, and remember that the name should be judged based on strategic merits as well as another key component is its legal availability. There are other elements that are important as well, like URL addresses, etc. But is it on strategy? Does it meet the criteria? Is it easy to pronounce, spell? And is it legally available? So appreciate you 
commenting on the team that was involved on your end, and I'd like to take this opportunity to compliment you and your executive team. The team had a significant role in the actual creation of the name, as well as the brand positioning and the core statements, the purpose, vision, and mission. So I think you've already kind of suggested to our listeners the importance of getting your team and executive team involved, because this isn't just a marketing decision by any means. Is there any other advice you'd want to give any listeners as to someone who is considering a, to go through a similar process? Yeah, I would just you know really echo uh, again some of the things that I said and, and you just elucidated is I feel it is really important that you have the executive leadership team involved. We're talking about not just the name of the company, but it is a strategic positioning. It's the name and brand that you're going to be building upon for many years to come. So as a company that had so many years of great growth and expansion across the market and have high expectations of continued growth in our space of healthcare IT is just an amazing growth area for now. It was really important that we had the entire team behind it. And I would say, you know, within that or beyond that, is just the fact that our team was so engaged and in terms of everyone knew that it was an open environment, that all ideas were important to put on the table. We had different perspectives. So involved in the ELT is our areas such as the CIO, the chief legal counsel, the chief financial officer, the chief operating officer, the chief product officer, the chief innovation officer, myself as a senior VP of business development. Those areas are all different perspectives and really important to understand how we're going to position ourselves in the future. And I'd say what I would suggest in terms of advice is what you said a moment ago and what you said constantly reminding politely was, you know, trust the process, trust the process. And that's why we hired you. We wanted methodology. We wanted process. We wanted to be guided down a path, but not necessarily told what to do, but guided down a path of where we'll get to our goals. Well, once again, I, I should compliment you and your team because you really did commit to it. The results are very clear. So you, you went through the emotional and rational process, developing and, and agreeing upon a name. Now, how do you take that forward? Of course, the corporate identity is a, a key component so that the visual complements the name and ultimately delivers an expectation and their promise of distinction. And yet, you now have to apply this logo and this new name to probably hundreds, if not thousands of areas, especially in a company your size. So how did you go about the process of organizing and planning for this broad level name change to occur on every brand touch point? I mean, that was a pretty considerable project in itself. It absolutely was a, a big project. We started back in, I'd say, the fall of last year where we had a pretty strong sense that we were going to be doing a very large launch. We did a full inventory of everywhere where we're using the name and the logo and the brand, whether it be on our websites, on our brochures, with our hundreds of clients and hundreds of thousands of partners and millions of members and hundreds of thousands of physicians that we work with and identifying every single area. And we also, of course, budgeted for everything in advance to make sure that we had a budget that would be able to support such a large launch. I met with my team, meaning my colleagues and the chief operating officer, the chief technology officer in particular, chief product officer who owned different areas of these componentry to make sure that they were coordinated with me in terms of identifying their individual projects that would need to be created based on this large inventory making sure the budgets were agreed upon and approved by all the proper committees. So moving into operational stage, by the time we had chosen our name, we already had obviously the budgets done, we had the project plans done, we had everything into our sprint planning for our agile IT software development for our different portals and letter generations and different communication portals. So it was Frankly, as daunting as it was, it went across highly seamlessly, which I was very pleased to see. I wasn't expecting it to be as seamless as it was, although it was busy. I think it was all that advanced planning that we had that was really uh, critical in the success of how we were able to execute. Well, from the outside in as well, you pulled it off quite well, and you were able to make it happen pretty seamlessly. So, well, in addition to these tactical steps of applying the name throughout the company, the big question often is, how do you launch this new name, both internally and externally? There is no exact methodology. 
let's talk about how you did it. Uh, maybe we can start by the internal audience first, which is often viewed as the company's most important audience and asset. First, you have to keep the name a secret. You don't want to get, let it get out, so you're able to keep it at the executive level. And then you have to really figure out what is the most appropriate way to launch the name and the brand internally so you give the internal audience a preview before you go externally. Can you kind of describe an overview of steps you went through on the internal launch? Sure. And again, you know, this was trusting the process. So some of the best advice I think that your organization gave us, Ryan, was we need to evolve or nurture both our internal stakeholders as well as our client stakeholders. So one of the first things we did was, before we even knew what the name was, was we did uh, an employee survey. So out of our 4,000 or so employees, we had about 1,000 of them or over 1,000 of them respond to a series of questions on their perspectives of the brand, the words that would describe what they thought about the company. We did the same with some of our key uh, client executives, and that helped build upon that there was something that was coming because we were we were messaging that. And then when we finally had chosen the name, and that was absolutely instrumental in choosing our name in terms of the employee feedback in particular, the word clouds that we had in terms of how they defined us and our culture of innovation, we went what I think you called a soft launch. About a month and a half before we actually launched, formally launched a new name with the external audience and actually changed over from MedAssurant to Innovalon, we announced through a live a video conference, teleconference, for all of our employees nationwide, what the name was going to be, why we were changing the name, and really the, the launching of the name, and had a uh, had a big turnout in terms of making sure that everyone was aware of it. And really, that was critically important to do that a month and a half or so in advance because we had a, a fairly rapid turnaround we were trying to focus on because we needed that time to turn all the MedAssurant naming to Anovalon by the early to mid-June time frame. And we couldn't keep it a secret for hundreds of people to know. So doing that, what I think you called a soft launch, helped us build a bridge from early May to mid-June in order to be able to get all the people that needed to be involved in updating portals and letters and client communications and websites and brochures, et cetera, to be involved in the process and actually be behind it, as I said earlier, as a brand ambassador. That was absolutely key to our success and helped build expectations and helped build momentum into the, the June launch and really exciting for everybody. It was a really critical part of our process. Uh, Jason, I appreciate that overview. I think that would be very helpful for our listeners who are going through a similar process. Very well done internally. And then you also have the external audience, your customers, suppliers, as well as the media, each with their own sensitive relationships and different messages. Do you do a, continue with a soft launch or do you a, a big bang? Maybe you can give us an overview of how you made some decisions and how you ultimately launched the brand externally as well. Sure. So in this case, we contacted our key clients and let them know at the same time when we let our employees know that we were planning to launch this new name and gave them the date of when it was going to be to have the understanding that we were working through them and all the different various pieces and parts of how we'll be working with them in the future underneath this new name. We set up a frequently asked questions email box. We had a client services team fully engaged with all of our uh, hundreds of clients and hundreds of thousands of physician partners across the country to make sure that they were very well aware of what was about to happen. From a media perspective, we, we had a very large uh, event over, over in Salt Lake City with AHIP, which is America's Health Insurance Plan, the largest health insurance consortium in the country. And we planned a very large party and a uh, new booth, and we did what I call uh, shock and awe across the entire print advertisement and media leading up to that event and uh, starting on the actual day of the launch. So a full-page ad in the Wall Street Journal, which appeared on A11 on June 5th, uh, came out fantastic. Um, we were also in The Economist and iPads and on the websites and uh, all the various healthcare-specific vehicles and email blasts the media and awareness through our public relations firm to make sure that we're accessible for interviews and also awareness of our conference in Salt Lake City later that year, later that month rather. So really we attempted to, over, to do was really 
to almost overwhelm the industry and uh, help them understand that our name has changed since we have such a big name in the industry that we wanted to quickly get people comfortable with the new name and really celebrate the new name as well, which culminated at a party where we invited the Goo Goo Dolls to play for a um, audience of about 600 people. So it was a very large-scale multimedia event, including multimedia press releases as well as a variety of other different vehicles. Well, Jason, well done. It's now just been a, roughly a month since this public launch of your new name and brand. So what has feedback been so far? I keep telling some of my friends and colleagues and my group I continue to get phenomenal feedback on our new name, phenomenal feedback on the the conference I just spoke about, on our signage. You know, what was really interesting uh, that uh, I I really don't want to go on without mentioning is one of the slides, as you know, Ryan, that your team created when the graphics was defining our new name, which was Novalon. And and Novalon is with the root word of innovation, and that's just a uh, a critical word within the, the culture of our company because it's how the culture of this company operates. It's focusing on insight, intervention, and impact, and it's such an important piece of it. But breaking out the way your team dissected the word and Novalon, there's value in there, which is a cornerstone of our offerings. There's On, which is communicating that we're action-oriented. There's Nova, which is newness and energy and passion. And then there's Valor, which is bold, uh, determination, integrity. All those different words really are making up our name, Novalon. And we ended up using that graphical image that you were portraying to us on how you saw the new name coming out. That's really become the main marketing vehicle of establishing who we are and why we did it. The Wall Street Journal ad, the Economist, posters at various conferences and email uh, communications. That has become uh, what was supposed to be an internal graphic has become a very, very widely used external graphic. And I constantly get feedback as late as just this week over in uh, Capitol Hill, we were meeting with a lot of uh, congressional staffers through a um, uh, conference that we were at, and I got a lot of very strong feedback from the group complimenting us on our, our branding and our name and, and how well it's gone. So it, it's, it's just been a phenomenal event for us. Well, thanks for the feedback. I'm so happy it's working out so well for you. You have an amazing company. It's been a pleasure to work with you. Unfortunately, we're out of time on our show today. But, Jason, thank you for being a guest on on Brand New Business. Any final thoughts or insights to share with our listeners? I'd say trust the process. Find a process that works. I like the process that Rikas Baird used. Being open to uh, breaking ground and breaking barriers that maybe occurred in the past. We could have stuck with a name like MedAssurant. We could have gone uh, with Med something else or health something else, we went different. I think just being open to that is uh, is important. But um, I, I'd say trust the process and get your executive leadership team involved. Perfect. Appreciate the feedback. If our listeners have any questions through your website or, or email? Sure. Yeah, sure. I, I'd be happy for them to contact me through uh, our website. Certainly they can call me directly at 301-809-4000, extension 1531. And my email is jrose, which is uh, J-R-O-S-E, at Enovalon. I-N-O-V-A-L-O-N dot com. Perfect, Jason. Thank you again for being a guest. Well, that concludes our show for today. This is Ryan Rikus, and you've been listening to another edition of Brand New Business with Rikus Baird. If you'd like to listen to the past shows or read our blog series, visit com. While you're there, please share your comments so we can all benefit from the discussion and various viewpoints. Till our next show, stay focused. <laughs>